In this tutorial, we're going to create the high poly ornate elements of our chandelier. Alright, so we've got most of the base work done on the high poly elements. We'll need to do a little bit of work inside of ZBrush, but I want to just kind of go through the major portions that we're going to be dealing with inside of ZBrush. So the first example is going to be the arm that connects the base, the shade, and the the rod. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll select the plane that represents the arm and we're going to set this up so that way we can send it over to ZBrush. Let's make sure that our polygons are square. So I've got the length and width set to 0.4 and then the length and width segments are set to 4. So we got nice square polygons. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Go Z function inside of 3ds Max or Maya, whatever you're using, and I'm going to send that over to ZBrush. Now, if you don't have this set up, you'll need to go over to ZBrush. And um, in ZBrush, you're going to go ahead and bring in the Go Z uh, preferences. So under Preferences, you're going to scroll down, you're going to go to Go Z, and you are going to choose what path you need for your digital content creation package, whether it be Maya, 3ds Max, Moto, Photoshop, Sculptress, uh, or even Cinema 4D. Uh, so with that set up, you can now go in and you can hit Go Z, Edit, and ZBrush. Now if it hasn't shown up and you've set that, make sure that you restart whatever software package you're using. So once this has been sent, we're going to drag this in, but for some reason it's not showing up. Um, it's in here, but it's just very confusing. So, what happened with this? Um, it's pretty simple. Um, let's go ahead and just do a quick new document. What has happened is that the pivot point for this object, whenever we drag it in, you'll notice it's offset. Whenever you use the GoZ function, that pivot point needs to be set up properly inside of your 3D package. So. This object here, let's go ahead and center the pivot point, and then we need to move the object to 0, 0, 0. So let's type in those values there, and then we'll use GoZ again, and then we'll drag that out, and there you go. So let's, let me go ahead and just do a new document really quickly, just to make sure that I don't have anything else in that document, and then edit. So now, what I do is I go ahead and hit uh, Shift F to show the polyframe. Okay, and I'm going to go to Geometry, and I need to divide this. But before I divide it, let me turn Smooth off so that way it stays nice and crisp. Go ahead and divide that, maybe about eight times, and that should give you enough resolution to begin masking out the design that you want. So the workflow that I like to use is just to simply mask out my design. So I'll hold down control and I'll come in and I'll start to just kind of design what I'm looking for just very roughly and then I'll come in and I'll start to maybe make some some different changes to it. So let's say I want to sharpen this up. I'll hold down control and then alt and just erase uh, what elements I need. If I need to sharpen it up or, or make it a little bit smoother, I can do that. I also harden up the edges by holding down control and then clicking on uh, those edges. And I, I meant control alt and then clicking on it. You'll see it hardens that up. So you can see kind of how I've gone about creating that design. Now I'm not going to go through that whole drawing process because I already have a tool available for you uh, to, to use very quickly. Um, this is 10 underscore begin and you can find that in the ZBrush files folder and uh, you can start right here. So with this set I'll go to subtool and I'm going to use extract. Let's go ahead and extract that geometry. Give it just a couple of minutes to do that. It shouldn't really take two minutes. It should only take about 15 seconds or so. So once that has finished extracting you'll hit accept and then you'll have two subtools. You'll have your original and then you'll have the extracted object. Go ahead and select the extracted object and then hide that plane. 
So with this, it's masked out the front, but not the sides. I want to keep the integrity of the sides, so I want to mask those. So just hold down Control, click outside of the object, and you'll see the masking has now gone to the edges. Now, whenever you are sculpting um, assets for VR, there are a couple of things that you'll want to keep in mind. The, the first thing that you want to keep in mind is that large scale details work better in VR. So what does that look like exactly? Notice how this flat edge catches a lot of light. That will read very well in a VR experience, uh, especially if the object is never going to get right up close to the camera. So we're thinking about our asset, the chandelier. The closest the player is probably going to come to that is maybe about two meters. And so it's going to be hanging up on the ceiling. We're only going to be able to see it from certain angles. And there might be some details that we don't necessarily need. And so um, by sculpting in details, just be aware of how the asset might be used. So for this, what I want to do is I want to switch over to the damn standard brush. Oop, let me try that one more time. Uh, damn standard brush. I want to set up my stroke for lazy mouse. I'm going to set up my radius to about 30. And then I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to activate symmetry in the Z direction. And then I'm going to go to brush and auto masking and make sure that back face masking is turned off. So with that, what it will allow me to do is to come in while I'm holding down Alt and I can begin to stroke kind of this raised detail off of this wrought iron arm. And so what I'll do is I'll just follow along one of the major contours of the element until it ends. And so I just kind of imagine this line goes all the way through and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because this is a handmade piece of uh, metal and I want it to look like it's imperfect. So I've gone through that entire thing. Take a look at the other side. We've got the exact same effect here. And then I'll come in and I'll maybe start to add a couple of other elements. Okay. Now whenever I start to end one stroke, I want it to end in the main one that I made. And you want to very lightly press until it has transitioned into that seamlessly. If you press really hard, it's going to raise that up quite a bit, and that can look a little off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up, end where it started. And there we go. Now you can go through this um, however you want to, um, and you can continue to detail that out, but I already have a subtool available to you so you can kind of see what the end product is going to look like. So let's go ahead and load that up. I'm going to go to Load Tool and I'm going to go to Z Tools and Ornate Element Polished. You'll notice a couple of things about this. The lines that we've created in the middle, they seem a little bit thicker. They gather a little bit more light. I went about doing that by polishing by features, so you can do that by going to the deformation section and then you'll see polish. So you can polish it a little bit if you want to round out some edges, polish crisp edges, that will kind of help with that, and then polish by features. The reason that I'm doing that is because I want light to gather um, very well on this object. I want larger details. If my details get to be too small, what can happen whenever the camera is far away or whenever the player is far away, it can create kind of this sparkle on some of those details and that can be a little disorienting. Now for something like this, it may not be too bad, but what if I start adding in something like high frequency detail? High frequency detail is going to be something like this. If I were to come in and go to my standard brush and drag rect and then I use alpha 07, if I come in and I start to kind of create this pitting all over it and it starts to get really 
you know, it starts to really get in there. It's, it's a lot of high frequency detail. It looks good up close and it kind of, it actually makes it look like wrought iron. But remember where it's going to be seen. If we start to pull back, you'll start to notice that that begins to flicker and we'll start to see little sparkles in the VR headset. And really, once we get the a certain distance away, we can't see that at all. So is it really important? In this case, no. Um, the larger details are going to read better and it's going to look just fine inside of the, the VR headset. So I would eliminate those from that. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and just load up my my tool again. And so with that tool loaded, we need to get it back over into 3ds Max. What you'll need to do first is you'll need to go to Z plugin and Decimation Master, and you'll need to pre-process the current subtool. Give it just a minute or two to go through that process, depending on the complexity. You'll notice that there's 632,000 uh, points on this. We want to reduce that down um, to about 20% of that, which is going to be around 126,000. So let's go ahead and decimate current. And you'll see that that has reduced down. Notice the detail. We haven't lost any detail. And we can now send this over into 3ds Max. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by just using the GoZ function. And let's go over to 3ds Max and you'll see that it should have dropped in here. Let's see if we can get it to... There it goes. It's going to take just a little bit of time to, to bring that in. So once it's in, we'll need to position it in our scene. So I'm going to move this up here. And let's go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. And then I'm going to scale this. And let me rotate it. Let me turn the rotation snap off. And what I want to do is I just want to rotate it to where it's touching the base, and then it's going to sit right up here in this, this loop here. So I may need, may need to scale it up just a little bit more. And I want it to sit right in there. And we want to get it close. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect right now. But that looks pretty good right about there. Great. So now that that's in, we have the contact points for the wrought iron piece on the, uh, the shade that will connect to that along the base as well, and then where the rod is going to hook around that. So now that we have these, these elements in here, we need to go ahead and retopo that element. And this could take just a little bit of time, but I want to go through that with you because there are some things that we need to think about whenever creating uh, VR assets as far as the low poly resolution goes. And so we'll talk about how to stay in budget, some things to think about, how to make good decisions whenever we are creating these low resolution elements.